this is something a little bit different for her. I can't even sew and I can sew that. Clearly you can do it, you just choose to not and I don't understand this. Hello, my beautiful light brights. For those of you who do not know me, my name is Neon Noir. I'm a half Italian, half Canadian drag queen, and I am the brightest crayon in the box. If you're new here, or if you haven't already done so, can you go ahead and hit that subscribe button? Girl, I've been saying this every week, but you still haven't done so. So hit that button, girl. Today, we are playing my favorite game, Fab or Drab, where we rate the looks of RuPaul's Drag Race All-Stars 9, Episode 8, and let you know if the looks are fab and fabulous or drab and awful. And make sure to stay tuned all the way to the end, where I let you know which looks got my fabs and drabs of the week. This week, we got ourselves another sewing challenge. That's right, this week, the queens must create their own looks from boxes of materials, but not any ordinary materials. Each queen is going to be getting a signature RuPaul song and must get inspired by the song to create this outfit. So if you've watched quite a few of my videos, when it comes to sewing challenges, I'm a little bit more flexible because bitch, that is hard. So we're gonna give some people a little bit of a pass, but let's find out who shined bright and who faded into obscurity. First up, we have Plastique Tiara, and Plastique Tiara for her song got Star Baby. She comes out all dressed in black and she's got a giant cape walking down the runway. As she walks down, she lifts up her cape and to reveal that it is a long train. Then we see underneath, she's got this beautiful like dark blue, almost black dress with this giant one star popping off of the side of her breast. She then paired it with very subtle yet beautiful makeup and beautiful hair. Now firstly, let's talk about the makeup. The fact that she can do this makeup like that in like 30 minutes because she spent more time on the dress is crazy to me because this is amazing makeup. She really just was like, doo -doo -doo -doo, done. I wish I had that power, but also she just got beautiful born structure as a man and as a woman that she can get away with wearing minimal makeup, whatever that means, right? Cause this ain't minimal bitch. But let's get into this garment. This garment is next level. First of all, it's hugging her so perfect and it's definitely got this like really regal s to it and the giant star coming off her breast it really takes this basic dress structure and really takes it up to another level of course she rhinestoned it so it really like levels it up as well and she added this ginormous train and oh my god i love this train First up, when I first saw it, I was like, it is giving me a little bit of Mugler Angel, you know, the Mugler perfume that looks like a star. It's definitely giving me that vibe, which you know what? I'm not really mad at at all. And then the colors work and it ties in the star on her breast, ties into the star on the train. It's all like flowing together and the colors are really melting. It feels like a night sky that's just shimmering. And that's totally what she's giving from the headpiece to the gown, to the whole thing. All in all, this is Amazing and definitely gonna be a bow. Next up, it's Georges, and Georges for her song is got I Got the Beat. Now, when they were showing the little boxes of what was gonna be happening, I saw the I Got the Beat box, and that's the box that I would have wanted because it had all the metallics, it had all the blacks, it had all the neons, it had all the fun colors that really resonate to me. But when Georges got this box, I was like, oh, okay, let's see how Georges is gonna turn it out because Georges isn't like that, like, clubby girl. She's a little bit more elegant. She's a little bit more put together. But then she turned it into this dance costume, which makes total sense for Georges. First of all, this is a great dance piece. They've got the metallics, it's got the green, they both play off of each other really, really well. I personally would have just liked to see a little bit of black in there, and that's not because my name is Neon Noir and I do love green and black together, but that's just because I do find that once you add black, it makes the other color shine even more. When you have a green and a metallic, it works. I'm not saying it doesn't. It just is a little bit more subtle, and I like to like be a little bit more in your face. And you can totally see that working really well in the hair. The hair is like these black pigtails, but they got just little streaks of colors in it. Honestly, when I saw this hair, I was like, that is such a simple hairdo, but so effective and so me. So I gotta get somebody to make me one of those because that is a freaking awesome. I think that the hair is a little bit dark for the outfit, hence the reason why I said we should add a little bit of black into it. But all in all, it is a great little 
traditional dance costume. Is it the most avant-garde, designy challenge that you would get? No, of course it's not. It is what it is. But then again, this is what Georgia does. She always gives you these sort of like dancey costumes. She's a tiny person and wears not a lot of clothing. That's just her. She looks sexy, she looks fun, and therefore she's gonna get a bow. Next up, it's Gottmik, and Gottmik for her song has got new friend silver, old friend gold. For her dress, Gottmik decided to do this crisscross silver and gold mixed metallic braid that wraps all around her body. She's then paired it with this lock and key around her waist and this giant handbag that's in the shape of a lock. She's paired it with a natural mug, well natural for Gottmik, and this pair with a blonde and a white streak in it. Again, Gottmik is going away from her black and whiteness. This is something a little bit different for her. Now, in the workroom when this was going on, both Plastique, Gottmik, and and a couple of others were saying that this is the song that they would want it because it had the most beautiful fabrics. And I was like, you know what? They kind of have a point. I personally wasn't gravitating towards this song because I miss the color and I'm a love color. The thing about having really good fabric is that you don't really have to do too much to it to make it shine. But here's the thing, Gottmik decided she is gonna do something with it. She took two pieces of fabric, crisscrossed it together to make this braid that kind of wraps all around her. She definitely did more than she needed to do with this box. She could probably could have just draped a beautiful gold dress and called it a day, but she decided to challenge herself. Uh, let's start off with the styling. The styling is amazing. I think the streak in her hair with a really nice little touch. I guarantee she did probably didn't bring that here, uh, but she probably just took one of her wigs and just colored it a little bit. And it is very effective to really make this whole look come together. Now this bag that she was making, I love, love, love this bag. Somebody should just like make those and sell those because it is super, super cool and funky. Now for the dress itself, I appreciate that she manipulated the material. I appreciate that she did something different to it. The part that kind of bothers me a little bit is that because she used this rope detailing, it does make her look a little bit wider than she is. I don't mind if you have some little bit of wider pieces, but I think it would have looked better had she used less of it. Hear me out. Had this been just like, let's say a gold dress and then she wrapped the wire around her in a more of a loose fashion, it wouldn't have bunched up as much in certain places and therefore you could have controlled uh, how wide you look at the edges. Now, the thing about Gottmik is that she is a tiny person so she can put on a little bit of weight and get away with it. Some of the other people may not have. The thing is, is Gottmik also cinches crazy so she still has the hourglass look. That being said, I still think a few less of the crisscrosses would have gone a long way because then we would have saw a little bit more more of the curves of her body. All in all though, that is the only fault I can find and that is why she is still getting a bow. Next up, it's Chanel. And Chanel being the queen of Christmas herself, decides to go for, hey sis, it's Christmas. Shocker! Of course, none of us are shocked that she chose this look because she is the Christmas queen. She has a whole Christmas business, so this makes total sense. She's probably the only one that will get a lot of good uses out of this outfit. But getting into this dress, she decides to go with a short little uh, sparkly green mini dress with some red detailing on it. She's then got these bows on her shoulders, on her hips, and in her hair. She is definitely looking like the Christmas present. Now, when you said, hey sis, it's Christmas, my initial thought was red, not green. So when she came out with green, I was like, ooh, this is a little bit of a surprise. I was really expecting a little bit more of that Santa Claus fantasy, but she decided not to go there. I do think this texture of green and this color of green is really beautiful. And this green is unexpected, which I think is kind of good because it already doesn't look like that typical Christmas costume that we see year after year after year. She definitely decided to try to bring it into a more modern version. Now, the thing is, is it modern? And this is where I don't know. Chanel loves putting too much stuff on her garments and always going over the top. She's got that very old school way of doing drag. And she said this time she paired it back. And I'm like, girl, where? You did not pair back anything. Yeah, okay, maybe you only have two elements on it, but they're so huge that they take over the dress. Personally, I think that she was on the right track, but definitely needed 
to edit. I think this would have looked a lot better had it just been just the one thing on her shoulder and not the thing on her waist. I think that would have really helped clean it up. Because she got this giant thing on her shoulder, I think it would have looked better with like hair that's down, that's a little bit wavy or just to the side. So it creates a little bit of space between the piece on her shoulder and the piece on her hair so it doesn't blend in. It is looking a little bit top heavy, which is probably the reason why she added this piece at the bottom. But then I find it a little bit random with one thing here and one thing there. I like the try, I like the ambition, I like that she's sticking to her brand so all those things work. And I like Chanel, let me just say that, I love Chanel, but this isn't just working for me. Now rethinking about it, actually I think had she just done a long green dress with the detailing on it, I think that would have been really cute. And instead of these two pieces, then like maybe just like a boa in the same material, I think that would have looked really great. I think all the elements are there, but they're just all wrong. And because they're all wrong, it's definitely gonna be a drab. <laughs> Next up, it's Roxy Andrews, and Roxy Andrews for her song got a lady cowboy. For her look, she decided to do this Western inspired look with this brown leather jacket with a fringe all over it, these brown chaps with fringe down the side, with this denim bodysuit, with this sort of bandana detailing around the neck. First off, clearly Roxy knows how to sew because not only did she make one piece, but she made three. She made a jacket, she made a bodysuit, and she made a pair of chaps, all in the same amount of time as somebody's made just a basic dress. So kudos to her. The other thing about Roxy is that she definitely stuck to the theme and she ran with it. I think her being a sort of seamstress decided to go with some of these more expensive fabrics, hence why she went with like this like leather suede material for the brown jacket. The question is, is it working? Now, the problem I have with the color brown is actually no problem at all. It's just the problem I have with it on a runway. The color is not that flashy and the lights really absorb it. So it looks very monotone and that was kind of a little bit of a miss. But the thing to do to combat it, she added rhinestones wherever she can to kind of get it like sparkling a little. So you can see that she was thinking through this. The problem is, is I don't know if it gave her the right payoff. She spent a lot of time on the rhinestones but there's really not enough for the runway and I say that just because of this color had this been a different color she probably wouldn't have needed the rhinestones or needed less of them but she spent a lot of time on the rhinestones and a lot of time on the look the piece underneath with the denim and the bandana collar I think is so cute so original I feel like had she just done the same bodysuit but did the brown in a different material it would have looked completely different I saw that she had cow print and I was like girl come on you can't use that cow print she said she didn't want to go too kitsch hence why she went with the brown and like I get it but kitsch really works on the runway and it's a lot bolder and it's a lot more present I feel like this look would look a lot better in person than it does on the TV show however all is not my favorite it's not popping enough this is not my favorite I have a tendency to want to drab it but is it bad enough to be a drab and the answer is no no it's not so I'm gonna go ahead and give it a soft five Next up, it's Miss Vanjie, and Miss Vanjie for her song has got Kitty Girl. And for the runway, she decided to make this a little sparkly dress that's got leopard print all over it. She's also made a little jacket in the same material to give you a whole color combination. This dress is literally the simplest dress I have ever seen. It is literally just like cut, cut, sew, sew. I can't even sew, and I can sew that. That is how basic this is. But does it look basic? And the answer is no, it doesn't. And the reason why it doesn't is because she chose a really good material to work with, so it shines on the runway. On top of it, Vanjie's whole aesthetic is this little bit of this hoochie mama hood girl. So this totally works with her. A little mini dress works with her. On top of it, the styling. She took every styling item in her suitcase and put it on her. She did the big necklaces. She did the big belt. She did the boots. She did the earrings. She did it all. And you know what? It works. It works because she gave you a whole vibe. Even though the dress is simple, she was able to distract us with everything else. Then she's paired it with this beautiful hair that just flows while she's walking down the runway. On top of it, she is selling this look. She definitely looks like she can come out of a music video, you know, a music video from the 90s or something like that. You can totally see in her like, push it or whatever 90s song you want to stick in there honestly the vibe just works for me this just goes to show you that you don't necessarily have to be that complicated she did a simple dress she did it well and it worked all in all it's not groundbreaking but it's good enough to get a 
Bow. Next up is Nina West, and Nina West for her song got Cha Cha Bitch, and oh my god, I was shocked when she got this song. When she got this song, I was like, what is Nina West gonna do? Because how do these two fit together? But then she decides to come out with this dress. She decides to come out with this like sort of black see-through dress with these red polka dot gloves and this giant red polka dot hat. She's paired it with black hair and she's kind of giving you like that seductress of the night, little bit Latina coming down the runway. And can I say it? Nina West looks so good. I was expecting her to come out maybe as like the dancing emoji ole because that felt like more something she would do i was not expecting this and then this makes me think if she's able to do this in a sewing challenge what the hell were excuses all the rest of the week i was giving her so many passes that people were questioning me but i was like oh it's nina that's what she does you know what i mean and then she comes out with this and i'm like you didn't even get a designer to do this and this is better than half the shit you were bringing the past weeks and i was like Clearly you can do it, you just choose to not. And I don't understand this. Let's get into this dress. She's done like the sheer black material, which is a really smart material. She's covered up all the right places and the little jolts of red on it really make it pop. I love the jolt of red on the arms. I love the jolt of red on this hat. This hat really has like that sexy, like I'm showing you vibes. It really matches with the dress. She then put the corset on top of the outfit to kind of hide her mid waist and really give you that hourglass figure. Now, I think that was a very smart choice. If I was gonna change one little thing is that I would have removed the red polka dot fabric from the middle of her waistband because I do feel like it takes away from her. Your focus goes there as opposed to going on your hat or your hands. I think had that just been plain black, I think it would have been a lot better. But that is like the only critique I have about it. I know, with Nina West. So therefore, if you hadn't guessed, this is definitely gonna be a bow. Next up, we have Angeria Paris Van Michaels, and for her song, Angeria got cake and candy. She decided to interpret this song by giving you this pale pink uh, bodysuit with these uh, chaps and this sort of a cowl neckline. She then paired it with this big blonde sculptural hair. Now, Angeria has been doing what I say you need to be doing when it comes to these design challenges is pair it with big hair. Because the minute you pair it with big hair, it just elevates all of it. Because once you start to look at the outfit, you realize that it is just a bodysuit with chaps. And this is a silhouette that probably Angeria has tons of, so it is not something difficult for her to make. It would be something difficult for me to make, but not something difficult for her to make. And I think that that was really smart. When it comes to these design challenges, it's not really about reinventing the wheel. It's about just making something that looks good. And if you know how to make chaps or if you know how to make a bodysuit, make that. Don't try to push it too far. This isn't Project Runway. This is Drag Race at the end of the day. Looking at the outfit, I wish she would have worked with a little bit more uh, differences in fabric. I find that the all the detailing, such as the cowl, the belt, the bodysuit, they all blend in together because either they're made from the same fabric or the same tonal fabric. I think that this would have looked a lot better had some of the pieces been done in like a brighter color. Imagine it was like some hot pinks and some pale pinks mixed together. I think that would have really added a little bit of zhuzh into that outfit. She then paired it with the big hair and like I said, the big hair is a really great strategy. I just don't think that this hair works with this outfit. I love that wig individually. I like this outfit individually. I just don't see them pairing together. This wig definitely gives me like alien, gives me like queen mother, and this bodysuit does not give me that same vibe. I think this specific suit would have looked better with like a long ponytail. I think that would have just really worked to kind of give you this more athletic vibe. Right now they're giving you two different vibes and I'm not sure which the two vibes are. That being said, is it bad? No, it's not bad. It, it does what it needs to do and she got away with it as you should, especially when you're spending that much on hair. All in all, it's good enough to get a bump. And that is it for this week's runway. What did you guys think? I always am a little bit apprehensive when it comes to these design challenges because they can go either way. I will say that it being on an all-star season, they are really turning it up and really doing some good fashion. Now, nothing has been like groundbreaking, but you're not gonna get groundbreaking fashion from my like one day, two day sewing challenge. You know what I mean? Unless you're like Utica, which by the way, needs to come back to an all-star season. Just throwing it out there. But on that note, let's talk about these looks and who had my fabs and drabs of the week. Well, my drab of the week this week goes to 
Chanel, and that is right, I decided to go with Chanel. Obviously, she was the only one that I dragged this week, and is the only one that I felt was like kind of meh. Everybody did kind of well, and had Chanel done this on a regular season, it would have been good enough, but look what she's competing against. So therefore, she got my drab of the week. But enough about the negative, let's get into the positive. Who had my fab of the week? Well, my fab of the week this week goes to Plastic Tiara. Again, no shocker there. Uh, I love this dress. It was the most elegant out of all of them. She definitely has an eye for fashion and she knows how to make it. And it is definitely worth my fab of the week. And that is it for this week's episode. Guys, do you agree or disagree with my comments? Well, let me know in the comments down below. And while you're there, go ahead and hit that like and subscribe button. More importantly, that subscribe button. Girl, push the button. Once again, my name is Neon Noir at Miss Neon Noir on all social platforms, and I'll see you in one of my next videos. Bye.